So today I want to talk about burnout. This was actually a popular question in the comments. So thank you for leaving your question in the comments. I, I love to answer it. And if you've been following my journey, you know I've dealt with a lot of burnout. I might have created a video or two about it. And apologize for the constant dropping. I'm charging right now and it's raining in Los Angeles. And uh, there's a huge drop which is hitting my top of my Tesla. Anyways, um, so burnout. Um, so I experienced it a lot. I would definitely say about a year ago um, was probably when I started. It was April of last year and it, it got really bad. Like, so let me describe what burnout is like. So every day you wake up, you sleep eight to nine hours a day. Uh, you wake up, you're still tired, you're low energy. You don't want to move. You don't want to do much. Um, you get grouchy when you have to do additional things. Um, you know, this might have been mixed in with a little bit of like depression, you know, low mood as well. But basically, you're just always tired, you're always stressed, you're always grumpy, you're not the best version of yourself. So, you know, it's it, you're, you're not fun to be around, right? Like, you can ask my girlfriend, um, now fiance, like, I, I wasn't fun to be around. She'd say, hey, let's do this. I'd be like, no, I don't want to do anything. Um, I wasn't fun to be around. And that's just a season of life, right? And... Um, so, you know, it, you know, physically I felt tired, mentally I felt tired, emotionally I felt tired, spiritually I felt tired, uh, I had a very, uh, pessimistic outlook on life. Um, I thought nothing was going well in my life, everything was failing and, you know, I kind of adopted a, a victim mentality a little bit, which is, you know, you, you know, I preached like you don't have a victim mentality, you go and conquer, right? You go get what you want because no one else will give it for you. Um, but what causes burnout for me? right so I, about a year ago um you know if you know my story i i bought i owned 90 i owned 90 units of real estate at one point i bought 80 units in eight months while working full time um in that period i got laid off uh from a job i had to get a new job um that i commuted 70 miles each way so it took me about an hour there hour and a half back so almost like three hours of commuting a day monday through friday um on my spare time, uh, so that would take me from like 7 a.m. all the way up to like 6 p.m. And then once I go home at 6 p.m., I would basically eat and then I have to like manage all the fires in my real estate because I was renovating a uh, 26 unit apartment complex in Oklahoma, my 20 unit apartment complex in Oklahoma, and my Valley at Mobile Home Park um, in Selma, Alabama, right? So like, and then plus my five single family homes, and, you know, I'm trying to maintain a, you know, we do stuff with my girlfriend, even though I didn't do as much as I normally do. I just still did some stuff and, you know, just trying to, you know, maintain that relationship because you have to put work into your relationship as well. It's not passive. Um, so I was just doing a bunch of stuff and, you know, it, it's very tiring. It's very stressful. It's very busy. And on top of all that, I, I started posting content on YouTube, right? Because I just wanted to document and share my journey. And, and hopefully that brings value to you guys. Um, so, you know, obviously doing a lot, uh, maximizing every minute I can to work. You know, even when I'm charging, I'm recording content, so there's no real downtime. When I'm driving, I'm listening to podcasts, learning, educating, trying to improve myself. Um, you know, my, my workout routine on top of that, maybe like once or twice a week, not as much as I used to do. It's just more for me to de-stress, um, to be honest. And you know that that's what burnout looks like, right? You're, you're working a full-time job. On top of that, you're you're managing an 80-unit value-add real estate portfolio because I'm I'm renovating my 26-unit, right? And I'm dealing with contractors for that one, dealing with my property manager, telling them what to do, um, dealing with my 20-unit, which I had a, on a hard money loan, and I'm renovating that unit. And hard money loans are stressful because you only have a year to execute your plan. I'm doing my mobile home park, and you know I had a bad property manager for that deal. And it's stressful telling them what to do and you're losing money every month, right? So on top of all that, I'm doing all that, you know, putting money to renovation for my 26 unit, putting money renovation for my 20 unit, putting money into my mobile park um, um, to renovate as well. And, you know, it feels like you're just losing a bunch of money, right? So like I felt like on top of all that, I felt like I was very poor, like the poorest I felt um, in my life, to be honest, right? Because I'm just constantly dumping money in right and you're not seeing your return yet right and then you know i've been doing that every day and on the weekends i wake up and 
have to take care of stuff for real estate, right? Because real estate's 24 seven. It's it's not nine to five, Monday to Friday. It's 24 seven, right? So literally I'm working like at least six days a week. Um, out of six days a week, I'm probably putting in at least um, every hour that I'm awake. So, you know, if I sleep, let's say eight hours, yeah, 16 hours, I'm probably putting in like 14 hours of, of work. You know, the rest I'm maybe just like watching TV, turning on my brain and, 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 and decompressing. Right, so uh, that's kind of what you have to go through, right? And uh, on Sunday, I'll just be a complete vegetable, turn my brain, and just like binge Netflix. Like that, that's my day off, right? So it's not easy, right? You're doing that for a constant amount of time. You're dealing with stress, um, and I remember like everything just was hitting me, right? Like I was doing job interviews at the time as well because I was trying to get a new job to lower my commute. I was managing real estate, and you know a lot of issues are happening, right? Like. My, you know, I document a lot of it, but like my, one of my single family homes, the tax got reassessed when I transferred it from LLC, from me to an LLC, and that was incorrect, so I had to dispute that. I took a lot of time and energy. My hard money lender um, was asking for an extension, so I had to go through that. Uh, I had to renovate these units. Um, you know, I brought in tenants, and the tenants didn't work out. You had to evict the tenants. Um, the contractor was taking longer than expected. The contractor was, um, you know, went over budget. You know, there's just a lot of issues. You know, my property manager was terrible. They, they just would say they do something and they don't do it. They didn't deliver, right? And then, so I was trying to sell my mobile park as well. So imagine working, let me describe the picture, like 14 hours a day, six days a week, no breaks, really, and you're losing $10,000 a month on your mobile park. Like, that's what it's really like, right? It's not glamorous, it's not fun, and I'm trying to sell this mobile park, and you're dealing with flaky sellers, and you're dealing with my property manager who's terrible, like they overpromise I'm gonna deliver. And you're just dealing with all these stressors. And I will say that I was angrier in that period of my life than I'm, I normally am. I'm, I'm usually very cool, calm, collected, but I was angry during that period and I think it's it's fair, right? Like I let the emotions get the best of me and, and during this period is when I learned to de-stress myself, right? And I implement a lot of that today. I, you know, if you've noticed a lot of my more recent YouTube videos, I talk about wellness, like sleep habits, supplement routine, exercise routine, how I de-stress myself, right? And that I learned that because of the hardship I went through when I was burned out, right? So, you know, so that, that, that goes into it. So, you know, when you're going through a hard period of life, when you're going through burnout, you want to make sure you get at least eight to nine hours of sleep, right? And that varies per person, but you want to get eight to nine hours. Of, that is non-negotiable, right? Non-negotiable, eight, nine hours of sleep. Whatever your number is, you need more sleep in, right? So you got to sleep at the same time every night, wake up at the same time every day, every day, right? And what does that entail? That entails giving up going out. That might entail drinking alcohol because alcohol lowers your quality of sleep. That entails maybe not hanging out with friends as much as you're used to, right? And cutting out activities you used to do. Like I used to watch a lot of sports. I had to cut down on watching sports because I need to sleep. I had to cut down on watching Netflix, watching anime because I need to sleep. So sleep was number one. Number two was cutting out alcohol, right? Like I don't drink much in general anyways because I, I have the Asian glow um, and like one or two shots makes me drunk. So that's not hard, right? Like if you want your brain to be in the peak state, avoid, you know, drugs and alcohol, right? You know, you have to cut out on alcohol. You have to cut out on, you know, if you smoke marijuana or you smoke cigarettes, try cut that out, right? And then on top of that, you want to eat healthy, right? Like don't overeat. I don't overeat anymore, right? Like I used to stuff myself until I'm full when I was like in my 20s. Now in my 30s, I just eat until I'm like 80% full. So I have more energy, right? I eat healthier, more vegetables, more fruits, uh, more balanced diet, right? A little bit less meat, right? Um, not, not as much processed foods. Um, on top of that, I want to optimize my supplement routine, right? I take a multivitamin every day, a vitamin D every day, a vitamin C if I'm feeling stressed, and a magnesium to calm me down. You know, I have a whole video talking about my supplement routine, right? I want to work on my sleep hygiene. So what's sleep hygiene? You want to wake up the same time every day. Sleep the same time every day. You want to limit um, your blue light exposure to your cell phone like like maybe an hour or two before you sleep. You want to make sure you eat your dinner earlier because it takes you about three to four hours to digest. So if you want to sleep at nine, then you better eat at six latest, right? Um, you want to make sure your room is dark and cool. So I wear like an eye mask, for example. You want to, uh, if you live in a city like me and it's noisy, uh, I play uh, Rain of Sound. I'm oh, sorry, Sound of Rain. So my brain, and that helps distract me to sleep. Um, I make sure my bed's comfortable, it's, it's cool, I'm warm. Um, 
you know, you want to limit your, your light, so I, you, you want to have blackout curtains, you want to wear eye masks, you, so you want, you want to avoid caffeine, right? So you have to do a bunch of things, right? If you want to sleep well, it starts in the morning, right? Are you getting sunlight exposure uh, to wake yourself up and optimize yourself? And on top of that, um, to also combat burnout and the stress is you want to reduce your stress, right? So what reduces stress for you? So what helped me was I'd start doing a morning routine. Right, I'd, I'd wake up, I'd stretch every morning, I'd be in silence, don't check your emails, don't check social media, don't touch your phone, right? First 30 minutes, wake up. I have a video about this as well. Check that video out about my morning routine. I'd wake up, brush my teeth, wash my face, stretch for five minutes, meditate for like five minutes, um, journal about whatever's on my mind, whatever's stressing me, whatever's on my mind, just jot it down, bullet point, right? Like I've been doing this since June of, of of 2023 and I, and I still continue to do it when I'm stressed, right? Whatever you have in your mind, just write it down. If you have a to-do list, write it down. Any stressors, write it down. And then when you put it on pen to paper, sometimes your problem doesn't seem as bad, right? Or it helps you manage it. So it's better to be on paper than in your mind. So I'll journal every day. Um, I'll make sure I eat breakfast. I'll drink water. I'll hydrate. Uh, I will, you know, listen to a podcast to educate myself, right? So you, you want to be consistent and, 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 you know, improve yourself. And, and on top of that, you want to do exercise, right? So, you know, for me, I used to work out when I was more serious, three to four times a week, an hour at a time and when I was powerlifting. But now I just do my goal, which I've been failing at is maybe three to four times a week, maybe for like 30 minutes, right? And not as much heavy compound lifts, but the point is to go there, work out, move your body, de-stress yourself, um, relieve some stress and, um, gives you more energy, right? For the next day. Um, and you gotta like improve on your mindset, improve yourself, right? So you, you really have to um, self-educate yourself. You got to um, have surround yourself with more positive people, right? So like you might have to cut out certain things. Like I stopped listening to the news. I never really did listen to news, but news is all negative, right? You gotta avoid people who always complain all day and are victims, right? You got you gotta be of those. You gotta keep protect what goes into your mind, right? So for me. I also had to very limit all my notifications. If you look at my phone, I barely have any notifications, right? Like I mute everything, right? Like I mute every notification, all the social media apps, I mute text messages, mute. Once I go to sleep, I turn on do not disturb so I don't get disturbed, right? Unless I'm on call at work and I leave it on, right? So you have to do whatever it takes to give yourself, put yourself in peak condition so that you can conquer and kill some dragons, right? So once my life stabilized, and what's stabilizing? You know, my 20 unit is now renovated and it's stabilized. You know, 18 out of 20 units are rented out. My 26 unit, you know, 18 out of 90% <clears throat> of my units, I think 24 out of 26 are rented out. My mobile park, I sold that back in November 2023. Um, you know, I got a new job, so that's less stressful. Um, so now I'm pausing, and despite pausing and trying to de stress from what I went through, uh, I'm still doing a lot of the strategies that I implemented back when I was burned out because I want to, it, it, it makes me feel good, right? Like it makes me feel good to sleep. It makes me feel good to avoid alcohol. It makes me feel good to eat well. <clears throat> so I'm trying to move these forward so that when I'm ready to buy real estate again, right? You know, I'm just, uh, you know, as you know, I just bought a primary residence, which is a new construction being built. So I'm going to do a video on that. But like when I'm ready to buy apartments again, I will know how to handle it, right? It won't be new for me. It won't be different and I'll be better prepared and in a better peak mindset and I probably won't buy as fast as I was buying in the past, right? So hopefully this video provides value on how I dealt with burnout, what burnout was like for me and how I came out better because of burnout. Um, hopefully give you some value, hopefully pick up some tips. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Let me know if you want me to discuss any other topics. Love your feedback, love to get comments. Please share this video with somebody who's going through the grind, who's going through burnout and I hope to see you in the next one. And please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much. See ya.